Hello, my name is Julia Streets and welcome to the Fixed Trading Community podcast. This episode is recorded at the Fixed Trading Community's offices on the 5th of December 2018. And today I'm joined by two guests, each well known within the Fixed Trading Community for their contributions and their insights, Rebecca Healy and Matthew Coop. Rebecca Healy is the head of EMEA Market Structure and Strategy at Liquidnet and the co-chair of Fixed Trading Community's EMEA Regional Committee. She is widely known as a leading voice on market structure, regulatory reform and financial services technology. Indeed, in November this year, Rebecca was named one of the most influential women in finance by Financial News and was awarded the Market Structure Excellence Award by The Trade. Prior to joining Liquidnet, Rebecca was Principal European Capital Markets Research Analyst and a consultant at Tab Group and in Citus Partners, an independent research consultancy she founded in 2015. Matthew Coop is co-chair of the Fixed Trading Community's EMEA Regional Committee and the EMEA Regulatory Subcommittee and a Director of Market Structure for the European Markets Business at Barclays. Prior to joining Barclays in 2015, Matthew was Director of Regulation and Market Structure EMEA at NICE Actimize with overall responsibility for sales and marketing, analysing the effects of new regulation on existing and new clients and he also chairs the British Bankers Association MIFID Steering Committee. Welcome to you both. So to say that Fixed Trading Community has had a busy year would be such an understatement. There have been events all around the world, including Singapore, London, Tokyo, New York, Sydney, Milan, Chicago, Stockholm, Paris and Boston. And these ever popular events, the industry has come together to collaborate on pressing issues such as the role of cryptocurrencies, thinking about algorithms, thinking about the future of regulations, innovation in fixed income trading, to name but a few. And these working groups have been more active than ever. It is no surprise, of course, that one of the leading topics on everybody's mind has been, without doubt, MIFID II. So, so I'm going to ask Matthew and Rebecca for their insights, particularly around MIFID II. And, and Matthew, let me come to you first of all. Um, do you have the members been coming together to respond to MIFID II? The members have been coming together in a very collaborative way um, because, the, you know, these regulations create a huge number of challenges to make sure that we can respond in a short period of time. And the way, the best way we do that is by creating industry standards in a free and open manner, and it enables an effective and good implementation of the regulation. A few examples of this um, have, have been, you know, the working groups we set up within the MIFID uh, working group. Um, we've had the transparency working group um, looking at post-trade transparency. Um, we've had the venue trading data, which has been a huge challenge for a large number of firms who are members of venues. For example, you know, we have to pass across the passport number um, of each trader that's trading on those venues. How can we do it in an effective way and also in a way which is appropriate to GDPR, which is something we've all learned about this year as mm-hmm. well. Um, and also alongside that as well, we've got the Algo Working Group. You know, with MIFID, we have a uh, a large challenge to make sure that we have appropriate structures in place to test our algorithms. And so the best way to address this is looking through putting testing standards in place and having a framework which the firms can use and leverage beyond that. And Rebecca, when we're looking forward as well around uh, best execution, obviously, what a really key part of that. I know that that's that's one of the groups that you've been sort of looking at very closely. What what's yet to be done? I mean, if we look at 2019, the work is by no means done. What what do we need to focus on now? Well, that's one of the more interesting aspects because I think when firms were originally looking at best execution, before we actually implemented it, it was about understanding what the guidelines actually meant. And that meant bringing to be people together. So whether you were sell side by side, venue, vendor, understanding what was required from each individual participant along the chain was in- incredibly important. And we worked very closely with regulators to make sure that we, how we had understood it was the correct interpretation. Now, as you move into implementation, this is where some of the new challenges actually occur. And when you look at the tables, what actually is required? When is a firm a liquidity provider? When are they not? Um, what is the definition of a liquidity provider? Is that for all trades or individual trades? When you're looking at mix, is it on venue, off venue? Um, Looking at the number, nature and duration of scheduled auctions, do you include opening auctions, closing auctions? It's just the nitty gritty of understanding and making sure that everybody is in sync with that interpretation. Uh, And so we're looking to relaunch the best execution working groups. 
and to try and make sure that not only are we working collaboratively together to get what is required, because the buy side now need to produce RTS 28 reports in April of this year. So we're coming up to a, another set of annual reports. But also it's potentially, could we go back to the regulators with um, suggestions of how we could potentially provide what they need, but in a more useful manner for the industry overall. Mm -hmm. and, and to what degree is the industry already coming together in those working groups, or do you need more people to participate in that? Well, as best execution is starting to get more of a global context, actually, we need input from everyone, not just those sitting in Europe, although that is more immediate, but we're starting to see um, an expansion of looking at best execution on a global basis. And just to add to that, we are about industry standards, which means, can we always have more people? Yes, Definitely, because how can it not be an industry standard if we don't have the whole industry engaging and in that open manner? And FIX is about leaving a hat at the door and getting involved because everyone has a really useful perspective to add to the, to, to the forming of that standard. And, and it's, it's always wonderful to see you both in one place at one time because it's uncommon, frankly. I mean, Rebecca, you walked in the door with a suitcase uh, in your hand and I know, Matthew, you're just about to go and travel. I mean, you, seriously, you do travel the world you know, talking to everybody about best execution as well. Could you share some insights into what your clients uh, and also members of fixed trading community are thinking about elsewhere? I think originally when um, method implementation was coming into play, there was very much a, a concept that this was just a problem that Europe had to bear. Um, as sort of we're heading into the the final stages of the first year of MIFID II implementation, the thing that has struck me, struck me more than anything is just how much MIFID is being adopted as a global standard across the world. Um, I've just completed a, a study on research and bundling, and it's remarkable how many firms are, are choosing to take research and bundling as a global policy. I think part of the reason for that is the difficulty in segregating a lot of the, the regulation just at a local level from an operational perspective. There's also um, issues around your fiduciary duty to your own clients. How can you justify one aspect for a European set of clients that you can't for, for those in the US, for example? And that's creating um, new challenges because, of course, as soon as you unbundle research from execution completely, you've then got a new set of challenges and when you're actually looking at best execution. And I know, Matt, you were uh, you were speaking to some people in the US and equally, you know, they're starting to ask questions around what does best execution now mean um, under the MIFID II perspective, even when they're sitting in the States? It, it, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, I was sitting, um, speaking to a, a hedge fund uh, in the US completely untouched by MIFID. And they come into the meeting and sit down with the traders and we have a chat and they go, hang on, two seconds. Um, can we get an investor relations team in, please? And I was like, OK, don't normally speak to these guys. Um, but the investor relations team come in, they sit down and they go, right, we want to do MIFID Best X reporting. And I was like, OK, fine. Um, why? Well, because we're now pitching for client money and, cli and the, our clients are asking for these reports. So they are starting. There's a trend in terms of the standard broadening wider than that. And, but then again, I think the other th element to this, which we need to check from an industry perspective, is looking at these reports and making sure that they're hitting their objective as well. And to make sure we include the right information and they are in the right interests of the end investor. And it's not only um, in relation to MIFID 2. Another of the aspects that was quite interesting is RG97 in Australia, um, a completely different regulation. But because of the overriding regulatory objective around um, transparency over costs and charges, Actually, there might not be a, a need to unbundle your research costs, but because you've got to have greater transparency over all your costs and charges, that's leading some asset management firms in um, in Australia to start looking at maybe I do need to unbundle my research charges. And you've also got ASIC now looking at some of the aspects around MIFID too. It's about reaching that global regulatory watermark and making sure that firms can achieve that. And it, in a fluid regulatory environment, which is going to be critical. And that's the reason why we need that collaboration from the industry. We need different market participants to be able to say, I need to provide this information. What is the best standardized format in which I can provide that information? And how does it feed into the 
the, the ecostructure or the chain of events that needs to happen because it's simply no good if the buy side get together and say, this is how we're going to produce our best execution report, but the venues aren't able to provide the data that goes down the chain. That's really the, the beauty of FIX is putting everybody involved in the process round a table to establish the best way of producing this at a practical level. So, so there are sort of two or three things come out of that. One of them is that the work that's gone before around transparency, venue data, best execution, transaction reporting, algo trading is getting into the nitty gritty of what's required next. The second is then how this all kind of conjoins on a global scale because of those reasons you were saying, but well, that's out into Australia or out into the US and, 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 and everywhere uh, looking at how they can do this. But also there are rumblings of MIFID 3. Uh, and as we look ahead a little bit, you know, I would love your thoughts on is a MIFID 3 coming? Is it a 2.1 or 2.2? And then also, of course, we've got Brexit as we look to, to 2019. What is that going to bring for us? So we've kind of already got MIFID 2.5. Um, as we've got the invest, uh, investment prudential review in the investment firm. Um, is being discussed in Parliament and in trialogue at the moment. So that is um, has a, a large amount of text that could change on the level one level. Um, and there, you know, th there are elements in that which is coming through, looking at equivalence and how that passes through. Um, and then we also have the start of the review of MIFID II, um, uh, it, kicking off at the beginning of next year. Um, we've got key elements which are being focused into that, looking at the effectiveness of transparency um, within the fixed income market um, and looking at um, the equity trading landscape and how liquidity is forming there um, and also looking at research um, and how that's coming together. I think, you know, the key thing with a lot of these things, and particularly if we're looking at fixed income, is actually looking at the quality of data and making sure that we've got effective standards in place. Now, in my mind, this is something that the industry should take a strong charge of to make sure we feed into the regulators um, because you know fixed income market is not a simple marketplace and the practitioners are the best places to make sure we form those to make sure we get effective regulation coming out. I think it was MIFID 3 really was always on the cards because of the ESMA review of MIFID 2 that was going to be in play in 2020. The issue we've got is obviously um, the process is being politicised by Brexit. And that means that rather than, I think, preconceived ideas about what MIFID 2 would mean and how that would play out in practice are being hijacked by certain political aspects. As Matt mentioned, you know, we're looking at the ESA review, IFR. There are a number of changes that are going to be in play as a result of that. The knock-on effects that that potentially could have for third country venues should um, the UK become a third country venue. You know, there's some really basic challenges that the industry are going to have to address. For example, SI. So um, we looked at SI and equity. Um, how will liquidity form if UK SI becomes a third country venue? Uh, when we did a study on this, that has significant impacts for the CAC 40, for example, the French stocks. You know, there's a, we're going to have to look at how liquidity um, continues to evolve once we know the lay of the land. And I think that gets back to not only that industry collaboration across different market participants, but also it's going to be very important now, UK to, to Europe, as well as global. Uh, we're also seeing changes in relation to some of the regulators suggesting there are elements of MIFID 2 that they would perhaps like to reconsider now. So again, just underpins this ever evolving landscape that we as an industry need to stay on top of uh, and work with each other to try and get the regulators what they need in order for us to be able to comply. But from a practical perspective, how we limit the overall cost of this considerable and continuous regulatory change. I completely agree. And I think the other part of this is going back to the practical side of things or what are we doing? And a large number of the listeners' views might be, well, what are we doing in Brexit? We have a Brexit working group which is being set up. Um, the question might be then be is, well, what are the challenges to Brexit and what should FIX be looking at? Static data, challenges around how that works out is going to be a massive challenge within Brexit because essentially we have to duplicate, duplicate all the tags that have been created in MIFID 2 and put them into a UK context and make sure we standardise them as well. So there is 
working groups around that. That is definitely going to be work in progress and it's going to happen as time progresses. It won't be perfect to start with, but we need to do that work. And if people want to get involved, please contact the programme office because work's starting now. And of course, looking ahead to next year, we have the EMEA Fixed Trading Conference uh, in March. And last year was the 10th anniversary, the biggest event ever. Uh, and certainly, it seems that this year is going to be even bigger with so much on, on the table for discussion. Uh, your call out to the industry about why they should come to the conference. Why, why should people come? Well, this year is going to be um, really quite exciting. Um, and I'll re let Rebecca introduce it. Well, I think really one of the great things about the Fixed Trading Conference is that um, it is for the industry by industry participants and that means that actually we can get to address some of the more challenging aspects um, and this year in, what we've decided to do is get involvement direct from a lot of industry bodies to get their input their feedback their contributions on the day so that we can truly say that the fix emir conference is for the industry, by industry participants, to make sure that we do address those challenging aspects, particularly with Brexit potentially just a few weeks away. It just remains to be said, it's going to be a, a very, very busy day. Uh, it's going to be a very fascinating year. It has been a year where people are reflecting on MIFID 2 and what that's meant, and also with other little bumps along the way, such as GDPR, exactly as, as Matthew said. Uh, as I said, you both travelled extensively, and we're grateful you've taken the time to join us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.